our table has date, person, and sales. And our goal is to create a monthly sales report for each employee for each month. But when we change, for example, change this to month four and hit Enter, we need our summary report to include that new month. Now, last video, we saw how to do this with some ifs and a pivot table. This video, we want to see how to do it with dynamic spilled arrays. And in particular, in this video, we're going to see how to piece all the different parts of the formula together and put them all together for the final report. Next video, we'll take what we learned in this video and take it up to the next level, a single cell formula using let. Now, everything we do in this video only works in Microsoft Excel 365. That version has a worksheet formula calculation engine that allows formulas to spill into the cells. Now, the first thing we need to do from this column is get a unique list. So we use the unique function. We highlight the Excel table column, person, close parentheses. And when I hit Enter, there's the unique list. Now, the top cell contains the formula. All the cells below do not contain the formula. So if we want to edit, we click in the top cell and hit F2. Now we want to sort using another amazing new Microsoft 365 function. So now we have a sorted list. Now if we look at the pattern of our report, notice Chantel's in the first position, but we need to repeat Chantel's name three times. Joe's in the second position, we need to repeat that three times, and so on. Now we have to repeat the person name three times because there are three unique months. And one, two, three, four, four blocks of names because there's four unique names. Now here's the thing. If we could generate a sequence of numbers like this, we could use the index function to look up and spill the results. So in the top cell, F2, and we're going to use index. There's the values we want to look up, comma. And this is where we need to create that array of row numbers. And we're going to hard code it first just to get a visual of what we're trying to create. Hard-coded arrays always start with open curly brackets. Then we need one, and we use a semicolon because that in array syntax means go down a row. One, semicolon, one, semicolon, two, three, four, and then close curly bracket. Of course, semicolon means go down a row. If we used a comma, that means go over a column. But we want these to spill down the row, so we use semicolons. So now, simultaneously inside of row number, when I close parentheses and hit Enter, index looks up and spills the results. Now the trick is, F2, how do we create that? Because if some source data changes here, like a new name or a new month, that won't update. So our next step, and we're going to come off to the side, is we're going to count how many unique names and months there are equals unique persons, close parentheses. Those are text values, so I'm going to use count a, which counts not empty cells, close parentheses. So now I hit Enter, and there's my count of four. We want to count unique months, so we start with the month function, which takes a serial number. So it'll take all of those dates, close parentheses, and it will convert it to a month number. In the top cell, F2. We'll use unique. And we want to count. So these are numbers, so we use count. So with these two formulas, we've extracted the numbers we need to create that sequence directly from the data in the data set. Now I'm going to have to use these a few times. So in edit mode, I'm going to highlight it and use the keyboard Control CC. Now, if that didn't open up this clipboard, you're going to have to manually open up the clipboard using that and then change your options so CC opens the clipboard. Now we have that saved up, and we can use it as many times as we want. Tab, F2. Now I'm going to copy this and bring it over to the clipboard, but I only have to use Control-C because the clipboard's already open. Now next to it, let's create our sequence of numbers. We'll use another amazing Excel 365 function, sequence. Now rows, well, we're going to take unique count of people times unique count of months. 
Now, when I close parentheses, this won't give us what we want, but that's the starting point. Now, anytime you have a sequence like this and we want to repeat 1, 1, 1, and then 2, 2, 2, we have to divide the full sequence by the count. So for us in the top cell, if I divide this by the count of unique months, we'll almost get what we want, Enter. I actually need to start at 0, so F2. And inside of sequence, there it is, rows. So right before the close parentheses, there we go, comma, comma, the start will be 0. And now when I hit Enter, if we take the integer of these, I'll get 0. The integer of these, I'll get 1, F2. So we'll take the int, Control-Enter. There's the repeating pattern, but we're off by 1. So F2, we'll add 1. And there is our sequence of numbers that we can put inside of index. So in the top cell, F2. Now that's a big, long formula, but we built it one little bit at a time, looked at the results so it's easier to understand. But now we take this whole big piece, Control-C, come over to the top cell, F2. Click inside. I'm going to click on row number and Control V and Enter. Now if a name is added, I'm going to just say S. That is absolutely amazing. Control Z. So we have our persons. Now we're going to ultimately in our sum ifs formula need the first day of each month and the last day of each month. So I'm going to start off by just getting the minimum date from the data set, so equals min. So of the date, close parentheses. Add some number formatting. I want to push it to the first of the month, so F2. I'm going to use that a couple times, so Control-C. We want to create the first day for whatever this month is. So inside of date, I need the year, so from min. We'll say, what's the year, comma. We need the month from that min date, month. And here I can use Control-V because the element that I'm pasting is at the top. So Control-V, close parentheses, comma, and then 1, close parentheses. So that's the first date. And in this data set, we'll assume that we're adding new data each month. So we have our start date. Now from this start date, how am I going to generate these end dates? We also need the first of the month dates. Well, if we could use the end of the month function on that date and say end of the month 0, I get the end of January. End of the month 1 would give me February. 2 would give me March. A 0 in the second argument of end of the month means give me the end of the month of the current month. A 1 in the second argument means Give me the end of the month one month forward. And a 2 means jump two months forward and give me the end of that month. So the pattern I need is 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. Now we're going to come over and steal the sequence part right there, Control-C. And off to the side, equal Control-V. So we're starting with the same 0 to 11. But whereas over here we had to divide by the count, and get the result. Here we want to divide by the count and get the remainder. And so the way we do that is with the mod function. There's the number, comma. And for the divisor, I'm going to come over. And there's our unique count of months. By dividing by the unique count of months, mod will give us the remainder. Close parentheses and Enter. And there's our pattern, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. Now I'm going to come over here and copy this, Control-C, F2. And now we use end of month. The start date, very carefully, I'm going to Control-V and then type a comma. So we have our start date and our sequence of 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. So at the end, close parentheses and Enter. In the top cell, F2. We can copy this, Control-C, Escape, equal Control-V. Now I'm going to highlight a bunch of cells below because this report's going to expand and contract. And we'll just use the default short date. Now 
in our last video, we had a column for start and end date. In this report, we just want to show the end date. But we're actually going to need inside our sumifs the start date also. Well, to get the start date, we can use that formula element, escape. And I'm going to scroll over to the side. Type an equal sign and Control V. Now, inside of end of month, that 012, 012 will work perfectly. But we don't want to use end of the month function. We want to use edate function. We have the same start and the same sequence of numbers. But edate takes the first of the month. And if we have a 0 in months, it's silly. It gives us the same day in the current month. But when month is 1, it gives us the same day in the next month. 2 will give us the same day, which happens to be the start of the month, two months ahead. So that will work. Highlight. Now this one I'm going to have to control C. I see it over here because we'll have to just use that formula element inside our sum ifs. All right, so you ready? Sum ifs. The sum range we're going to add from the sales column, comma, persons, comma, criteria 1. This is a spilled array, so when I highlight it, it properly puts J5 because that's where the formula lives. And then the pound operator, Microsoft calls that the spilled range operator. And what that means is as the spilled range expands and contracts, the formula element will expand and contract also. Comma, we need date one time in criteria range, comma. And this is the lower limit, so I have to say, the dates over in the column, how many of you are greater than or equal to in double quotes and join it to, that's at the top, so we can just Control V. Those dates contain all of the start of the month dates, comma, criteria range 3. We have to repeat date, comma, criteria 3. This is going to be the upper limit, so we say in double quotes, less than or equal to in double quotes and join it. And actually, if you want, you can just click the cell and type pound. And that is our formula. Close parentheses and Enter. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to highlight enough cells so it will accommodate any future expand. And I'm just going to apply currency. Now one last thing before we test this, I want to add conditional formatting. So again, I'm going to highlight enough cells down below. And I want to add conditional formatting that says is the cell not empty? Conditional formatting, new rule. Use a formula to determine which cells to format. Format values where this formula is true. Now, I highlighted this, and the active cell is in the upper left. So when I create a formula, I have to click in the upper left cell, and I need to get rid of all the dollar signs. So I hit F4 one, two, three times. And now we want to ask the question of that relative cell reference, are you not? empty. That means we have a less than symbol, greater than symbol, and two double quotes. That logical formula comes out true when something's in the cell, and false when the cell is empty, or there's a zero length text string. Now we can click Format. And you can add whatever formatting. I always add green where there's formulas. That might not be appropriate for your final report, or whatever other formatting you'd like. Click OK, click OK. And now let's test this. S. And just like that, it is working. Control Z. If I come down to the bottom, Control down arrow, we have some new data. Control C. This is an Excel table. So I, at the bottom, Control V. And now look at that. Our report is updating. All right, that was a lot of fun with creating the different pieces to our final formulas off to the side, and then mashing them all together for our three-column report. Now, in this video, we had a lot of repeating formula elements, like count unique month. We had to repeat that a few times. So in our next video, we'll see how to use the let function to not only avoid the repetition, but instead of one, two, three different formulas, we'll use the let function in a single cell. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And be sure to check out the two other videos in this series.